from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. You are tuned in to the best of Matt Connerton Unleashed. <laughs> we got plenty of time. Mm. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, this is Q, Matt. And I'm getting a little sick of the way you're promoting all this communist intrigue on your show. <laughs> Q, where have you been? Yeah, we, we haven't yeah. heard from you in and, forever. You know, as you know, I investigate the deep state, and that, and deep state is written all over this nonsense. It's not just on uh, public radio. This is on, on practically every TV channel. You know, they're trying yes. to frame up uh, President Trump. Well, it's on NPR. You know, against the will of the respect. people. This guy won an election. They can't stand it. They hate it. Well, Q, you are, uh, so, uh, we haven't heard from you in a long time, so just so so people are, are clear. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I had to travel incognito. You know, I'm, I'm right in the middle of these hearings here. I'm on the, I'm on the Democrat side, I got to tell you. It's just nonsense. These people, they just talk nonsense as they're trying to frame up the president of the United States. You know, it, it's crazy. So you're, I just don't get it. You're undercover with the Democrats? Of course I'm undercover. You know, wow. I'm, a tr- I'm, a, I'm a Trumper. I know. Gotta I know. be undercover. It's not even safe in this place. He's, you know, uh, Congress, uh, it's, it's run by the squad now. It's a bunch of communists there. Right, right. Wow, that's uh, Hey, remarkable. listen, you know, I got a couple of hats I can send you for free. You know, <laughs> I, I got them. Uh, I got them from the Trump campaign. Would you be interested in uh, in wearing a uh, "Make America Great Again" hat instead of that stupid hat you're wearing? What what is that? Hey, 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 hey! Is that what it says? It is a CRKT Columbia River Knife and Tool, a, a great company with great hats. You leave Never that hat alone. I like Never that. Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what are they advertising on your show or something? No, I just you finally uh, got an advertiser. No, well, we do. We're uh, sponsored by the Hop Knot at uh, One Thousand Elm, Elm Street. Street. Yes, have you been there, Q? Yeah. Well, I suggest you get a, a, a red hat. It'd be a very nice contrast to your usual uniform, which is dark. Yes, you're, you're very dark, and 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 you're on the dark side of politics too. You're on the side of a. Of the Bolsheviks and the communists and the squad. <laughs> yeah, you probably love the squad, right? You 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 like that uh, Castro chick, Ocasio <laughs> Castro, right? Don't we all? You love her, right? Well, I you know I I uh, I don't know if I love her. I'd I'd like to meet her sometime, uh, Q. Well, you, no, of course you would. You could probably of introduce you me. Would. You're 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 there. You've penetrated the uh, the Democrats. Uh, in the uh, in the capital, you could probably uh, you know get yeah, me. In I got to say, it's a very paranoid environment here. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody trusts anybody, right? And of course, they're right. You can't trust anybody. This is politics. Everybody's a liar, right? Well, how do you get them to trust you? The only guy telling the truth in Washington D.C. is Donald J. Trump. Yes, he's making America great again. We got the best economy in America in a thousand years. A thousand years? That's remarkable. A thousand years? That's a, a pretty yeah, long well, time. Not gonna lie. Before the, uh, the Europeans got here, you know, it wasn't a great economy. You right. Know? Bunch of uh, what, what do they call them now? Native Americans. Yes. Yeah. What an insult! There was no America before these these Europeans got here. Native Americans. It's an insult. It's like you know calling black people Afro Americans. You know they got to be politically correct. We know what they are. Hold on. Hold on. Hold they on. Can't hold use on. the word on well, your show, yeah, but we know what they are. Let's let's not go any further with that uh, particular uh, thought cue. Yeah. But uh, so if but if uh, getting back to uh, Native Americans, so if Elizabeth Warren were to become president, would you see that as uh, some sort of insurgency? Oh, you really you're really trying to provoke me now, I, aren't you, I, uh... Elizabeth Warren? You mean? <laughs> Pocahontas? Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah, she's really Indian. Do you realize <laughs> yeah. that Elizabeth Warren was a Republican for decades? For decades? I, I didn't know. how much work she did for American corporations, but now she's singing a different song, ain't she? Now she's on the side of the working man who's getting screwed by the Republicans. That's her, that's her story. Mm, yes. 
She's anything she needs to be. Don't trust them, Matt. Don't trust these people. They all represent the deep state. They're against Donald Trump because he's trying to reverse this decline of America. <laughs> well, Q, you know, I would point out that uh, Donald Trump was himself a member of a, of a different party at one time for a long time, I believe. Yeah, who says that? Well, I, my understanding is he was a Democrat at one point. Your understanding. Oh, how convenient. (laughs) Well. Yeah, how convenient. (laughs) Donald Trump was always for the people. He's creating jobs all over America. He's got hotels. He's got golf courses. He makes... He makes America great because he's creating jobs wherever he goes. Look at the latest job number. Give him a little credit. Oh, and he also uh, signed a bill, uh, you know, uh, forcing uh, hospitals to disclose uh, prices on uh, health care procedures and so forth, which I, I give him credit where it's due, uh, Q. I give, uh, I give him credit well, where it's due. Well, of course. Of course he should get credit for that. It's the only place you go where you don't know the prices. Even yes. when you go to a dentist, you know, you ask the dentist, what's it going to cost? He's right. going to tell you. Right. That's right. Yes. Of course, uh, yeah, you, it's different if you got insurance, you know. Right. But the, the problem with dental insurance is it only works on Tuesday between 2 and 4 p.m. <laughs> it only works on Tuesday insurance. between 2 and 4 p.m. Yes, yes. Why not 4 and 6 p.m. like the Matt Connerson show? That's right, yes. Well, no one's getting dental. Yeah, well, well I'm uh, it ain't the Matt Connerson show. They just show. listen to it while they're it's getting their teeth the pulled out. Give you mm. up money and mortgage your house to the dentist show. <laughs> now, well. These guys like to make $1,000 an hour. Who, the dentist? Of course. Wow. Have you been to a dentist lately? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Q, so I uh, I have never had a cavity. So uh, been, you know, I'm from New York. I've been I'm very from fortunate. the city. They make $1,000 an hour, yeah. maybe more. Everybody's getting $1,000 an hour now in New York City. Uh, wow. Really? Woman here. Is that the new minimum wage? And you know why? Because Trump's got a lot of property in New York City. Oh. Really? Because I wanted yeah. to move and out he's there. He's making New York City great again. But, you know, he never gets any credit. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, uh, okay. he didn't win New York sure. City. Well, now he's he uh, he's hightailing it to Florida, right? Isn't he? He's, he's abandoning. He's going his where home. it's warm. No, no, he's going where well, it's warm. You know, look wow. at all those uh, you know communists in the Democrat Party in New York City. <laughs> Chuck Schumer, communist. Uh, Hillary Clinton before communist. Right. Well, she's. I mean, a yeah, I'm listening right? to these hearings. It's it's hard to pay attention to it because every time I listen to these Democrats talk. I got this question in the back of my mind, you know? Mm-hmm. I got I got a very serious question. Mm-hmm. What's that? What's the question? Yeah. Well, what about Benghazi? <laughs> right. Well, we're going to get into that. That's a and and her. What about the email? And her emails. Everybody yes. forgets. That's true. Well, everyone forgets for now, but I'm pretty sure in Trump's second term, and I think you'll agree with uh, with me on this cue, uh, he will in fact finally lock her up. The wall's going to get built. He's well, going to so. lock her up. And uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I, I actually saw her on, on uh, the Howard Stern show, yes. of all things. Yes. She talked about his sex life. This woman's got no shame. <laughs> I thought she came off, like, for the first time in her entire career, I thought she finally uh, managed to come off as likable and relatable. And I actually mean that sincerely. Oh, yeah, she told her. the truth, like, when she claimed she liked men. <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, you don't. Uh, she don't well, like men. Well, well you know, there, uh, she don't, she likes women. Well, Hillary Clinton likes women, and wrong. she likes nothing wrong with that. Communism, right? Right? Yes. Well, don't don't. Um, but, you know, I'm watching this hearing, and it, it's lame. These hearings, you know. I I'm trying to pay attention to it, but it's boring. Right? It's boring. You know, they claim that Trump was trying to bribe somebody. It's just nonsense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was just making a deal. This is, this is what Trump does. He's he, a deal he, maker. He's, he's the genius of making deals. Yes. And so he wanted, he wanted a little help from Ukraine mm-hmm. to root out the corruption in Ukraine. Yes. And also where Americans are in Ukraine, you know, tr- trying to act in a corrupt way. Right. Like, Joe Biden, the most corrupt Democrat in the history of the party. Ooh, even even more corrupt than Hillary Clinton. What about his emails? Why isn't anyone asking about that? 
He probably has yeah, emails. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. I'm, I'm sure we'd see a lot of interesting correspondence in Joe, in Joe Biden's emails. I yes. mean, if you can even remember them. The guy's like uh, 500 years old. Doesn't well, make any close. sense. Yeah, yeah. He He's got hairy legs that he talks about. I mean, the guy is a little bit weird. You know, hugging everybody, grabbing women from behind. You know, where's the scandal there? Right, right. So are you telling me, Q, that if you saw Joe Biden in a swimming pool, you wouldn't go up to him and, you know, kind of touch his leg hair a little bit? What, is this some kind of joke? Oh, I'm of just Of course asking. I wouldn't do anything like that. And if I saw Joe Biden in a swimming pool, I'd get the hell out of the pool. <laughs> right. I don't trust that guy. Wow, wow. You know, he, he's just a little bit too weird, and let's face it, he's too old. We need a young man like Donald Trump, a guy with a lot of energy, running this country and making it great. Hey, we have had 11 years of prosperity due to Donald J. Trump. That's true. You know, when have we had this uninterrupted, peri- uninterrupted period of uh, prosperity in America? Last month, 250,000 new jobs. Does Trump get any credit for that? No. They're probably trying to give that credit to the squad. Right. Yes. Well, you know, uh, uh, but Trump hasn't been president for 11 years, Q. I hate to, <laughs> I hate to point that out. I was going to say, do your math here. Um... Yeah. I mean, uh, Q, I think you're hanging out do with what, the... Uh, what, What are you talking? Well, I mean, I'm just saying Trump hasn't been president for that entire... He's only uh, been president for, like... Three years. He's a shadow yeah. president. He's in the background. Uh, this guy's yep. been running for president yep. for 30 years. <laughs> yep. Well, you yeah, might constantly, be, uh... you know, he's constantly threatening to run, <laughs> right. you know, hoping that these people who really represent the Bolsheviks of the world yes. are going to, you know, fall in line and, uh, and, and go with the Trump program. He's constantly pushing, constantly threatening. And, you know, it wasn't going the way he wanted to do. So he finally, he had to make the sacrifice and run. Yes, he yes. He exposed himself to all this negativity. Right. He did uh he did sacrifice him. Actually, he really is. You uh, know what? I you know what, Q? I think you and the evangelicals are right. Oh boy. M- much like Jesus, Trump also. Oh, uh, you sac- oh you're making fun of no, religious no, no. people. No, no. Oh, Trump, oh, that is boy. so Here like we you. Go. Trump that is oh, so boy. like you Trump? because you are an atheist. You're a secular humanist. I know people like you. They're everywhere now. Trump don't believe in anything. Trump sacrificed himself for us. I think it's wonderful. I'm not an atheist. I'm more agnostic. Uh, it is true. I mean, if you're suggesting, Q, that I don't have an imaginary friend who lives in the sky, that is true. But I try to keep an open mind about these things. I could be convinced. Oh, sure you do. Sure you do. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. This whole planet, uh, the, the America, the miracle of America... You know, I mean, how would this be possible without God protecting us? How would that happen? You think that happens by accident? No. We got a big guy looking out for this country. And that's why, you know, so many religious people are backing Donald Trump mm. because they're working the same game. They're trying to make America great again, almost as great as Donald Trump himself. Well, when you said when you say the big guy, do you mean a deity, or are you referring to Trump? Well, you know, it's almost synonymous. You know, right, you know what right. I'm saying? I do. Yes. Because Trump, you know, he is the chosen one. He's been yes. chosen. Yes. And he is he is doing the job, and the Democrats they just can't stand it because they couldn't get the job done. Right. I mean, can you imagine what this country would have looked like if Hillary Clinton had become president of the United States? I imagine uh, she would have continued the uh, Sharia law that we lived under for eight years during uh, President Obama. It would have been awful. Yeah, probably, you know, yeah. Uh, probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, n- not to mention, you know, she'd have her foundation. I mean, she collected $3 billion in her foundation doing favors for people all over the world. Mm. And, and she was only Secretary of State. Can right. you imagine how big that foundation would be if she was president? Mm. Do you realize the favors... Hillary Clinton could do for people right. as president of the United States. Right. The doors she could open mm-hmm. for Israel, uh, uh, for all of these countries, you know, uh, they, they would just be pouring money into her foundation. It wouldn't be $25 million, It would be $250 million. It right. It would be a billion. Ukraine, you know, Ukraine would be, would be giving money. her money. For the so-called Clinton 
Global Initiative, yes. whatever the hell that was. Right. Have you ever heard of what they did? Well, I know. They I do- mean, what did that organization ever do? Well, I believe they do a lot of uh, charity work. Uh, I, I think they're particularly uh, active in Africa. Helping uh, with uh, much of the, the oh yeah there. yeah yeah oh, like look at our American, Clinton, really our American <laughs> kids <laughs> really gives a damn about Africa. I mean, let's oh. face it, nobody's ever gotten anywhere in Africa. Yeah, the uh, whole place is pretty much run by uh, natural selection. Everybody's fighting, killing, eating each other. You know, I mean, they got <laughs> cannibals over there. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's not. She don't care about Africa. You know who she cares about? Who? She cares about Hillary Clinton. Oh. She's a narcissist. She's an egomaniac. She's everything bad. She's got no character. Right. And you know what? All these investigations of Donald Trump. I'd like to see some investigations of Hillary Clinton. You know, tr- Trump promised that. I've been very disappointed. Yes. That Trump didn't investigate Hillary Clinton. He said he was going to do that. I have an idea, Q. I think when, and I think we can safely assume, Trump will win a second term. I think when Trump is in his second term, he should uh, open up uh, a series of maybe somewhere to be between 25 to 30 uh, different uh, Benghazi hearings. I think that would be great. 25 to 30, that's a lot. Uh, you know, yeah. the Benghazi thing... <laughs> They'll never get to the bottom of it. It's just right. a bunch, you know, bunch of obfuscation. You know, Hillary yes. Clinton. What possible difference could it make now? Yeah, you know, Americans dead. She don't care. Right. But I'll tell you, the the the, the real gold mine is the Clinton Foundation. That's the gold mine. That's the mother load, and that's what should be investigated. I don't understand why it hasn't been. Do you? Do you um, understand why the the Clinton Global Initiative and how they got those billions of dollars? You understand why that never got investigated? Because I don't. I don't get it. I'll, well, I'll tell you what, uh, Q. I'm going to blow your mind. There is someone who you would probably consider a liberal, secular, commie jerk, but the, but he would agree with you on this. Jank Uger of the Young Turks which is uh, pretty far left by your standard skew, he actually says the same thing, that the Clinton Foundation should be investigated. You have something in common with Cenk Uger. Can you believe it? Yeah, well, I wish you wouldn't say that too loud. Well, you know, I, you, everybody knows he's godless commie scum. He is an atheist. Yeah, he's so. human waste. Well. The man is excrement. <laughs> Wow. I, 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 I actually, I like him. We had Mike Manetta. Tell me Manetta. how you really feel, man. We had Mike Manetta uh, from the Young Turks on the show once. It was great. Wait a minute. Is that the, is that the kid talking with the crazy glasses and his hat on backwards? <laughs> is that the kid? That is him. Yeah, that, that's me. Hi. That is Christian Lacoste. And what's he doing on this show? I'm learning. The guy's 14 years old. And he I'm 14 years guitar. old. I'm Probably 14 years like old. Crazy heavy metal music. You sound like you sound like one of those conspiracy theorists that are on YouTube and talking out their rear end, my man. Oh no, this is Q. He's very oh, hi Q. My name's Christian He's... Lacoste. I'm 19 years old, actually. Q's actually. Well, you quite, look 14. Uh, I think okay, we got you, off on you, the wrong foot. You need to get here. back to high school. You shouldn't have dropped out. <laughs> I didn't drop out. I actually graduated with my diploma, bud. Ooh, oh, come well, on, do your math. You know. Doesn't sound Seems like to it. me like you can't do uh, your math. You know, I'm not going to waste my time with you. You're a kid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, eventually yep. you'll you'll get yep. with some Bolshevik program, yep. some communist program. You're probably a Democrat. Tell me how you uh, really feel, please. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, Matt. He claims he's uh, he's non-aligned, but we know he's a Democrat. He's a closet <sighs> Democrat, and that's why he eats up all these hearings. You know, because he loves hearing people. <sighs> You know, run scams and frauds yeah. and witch hunts on the great oh. Donald Trump. <laughs> right. But uh, even Matt understands that Trump's going to get reelected, probably this time by an even bigger margin than before. Well, actually, Q, my uh, my prediction, I don't know if you ever hear the show, uh, Q, but uh, my prediction has been uh, I think he's going to lose the popular vote by a larger margin this time, but he'll still carry all the same states. So I do think he'll uh, win yeah, re-election. Well, but you can blow that out your barracks bags. Listen, <laughs> I, I got work to do. I can't. I can't. I can't keep talking to somebody that uh, expresses nonsense twenty two hours every day. You know, I got things to do. I got an important mission. I'm working. I'm working on the deep state mm-hmm. exposing it, 
and I don't even have to do much. I mean, these hearings pretty much say it all. That pencil neck, uh, well, what's his name? The guy from the uh, Judiciary Committee, the one from California, pencil neck Schiff. Oh, yes, Adam Schiff, yes. Adam Schiff. Yeah, Adam Schiff. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. I don't know what's happening to this country. I don't even recognize America anymore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Trump can turn this around. I mean, things well, have gotten pretty bad. I thought he'd but already. That's yeah. it. I said my piece. Now I'm getting off. You know, I appreciate you letting me have a few uh, a few words here on your show. Yes. And, and you can go and uh, you know talk to your 14 year old kid about uh, <laughs> politics and everything. Is and is uh, hey instead of going back music, to doing your you know, work, I think you should go back to math that. class, please. All right, Q. Uh, thank okay, you. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you for Bye. the call. Bye. Bye. Oh man! All right, that was our Wh- that 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 went whoa. That was our friend Q, and he's uh, not only is he deep in the uh, deep state working undercover, but yeah. apparently he's uh, with the Democrats as well. And apparently he thinks I'm 14 years old. Yes. Guys, do I really look 14 years old? Well, do you, I really look 14 years old? You would be the uh, tallest 14 uh, year old I'd ever. That's met. That's what I'm saying. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. From the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, you are tuned in to the best of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And speaking of which, speaking of all these responsibilities, I've got to get to this before uh, before we run out of time. What are we getting this to? Is, this is super important. Um, is it the cattle report? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, our new affiliate in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, has been really on me about this. Yeah. Um, I keep hearing from the uh, station manager there. We have to uh, we have to do the uh, cattle report. So I, I did promise uh, uh, I did promise Billy Joe Bob that, Billy uh, Joe Bob. that we would do this today. So if you want to um, like let m- make me do the cattle report next time and just send it to me, I'll do it. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be particular about it, that it's got to be the host. But uh, so our new affiliate KCOW, uh, KCOW, which, of course, uh, hello to uh, Michael Martino's meme who is listening to us on uh, on KCOW. You know, KCOW is the, uh, it's the biggest uh, country and Western and um, talk radio station in all of Texas. It's uh, very, very important. Let's see. So this is your cattle report for December 9th, 2019. Cattle sales last week with weighted average steer and a heifer prices closed in the week. From 153 to 154, prices are three higher than the previous week. Fed cattle prices are now trading three higher than last year. This is the first time since August Fed prices have been above last year. Looking at the non-Fed market, butcher cows traded one higher through commercial auction facilities last week. Annual lows are likely in our rearview mirror. And this is your cattle report for KCOW. There we go. They want me to play the uh, music for a certain amount of you time. Should, you, should let, you should let me do it, and, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to send you tomorrow's uh, cattle report. Please. Yes. Now so, you're going to be talking my Western accent. So there you go. So that should uh, satisfy our uh, our new affiliates at KCOW. In uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. You know, in Texas, the radio stations start with a K instead of a W. Because now they're going to uh, talk in a Western accent all for the show. They're in the Western uh, half of the country. Oh, and we have a call. Uh, let me grab this. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm not talking to that accent. Wel- welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, uh, this is Michael Martino's meme, and uh, I just wanted to thank you for the cattle um, report. You know, I love listening to you here on. K Cow, K C O W in Dallas, Fort Worth. Then you are my favorite radio host. And is Michael on the show today? 
Uh, no, uh, Meme Martino, uh, your uh, grandson, uh, Michael Martino, is not with us here today. But uh, we've heard a lot about you, and uh, thank you so much uh, for calling in today. Well, thank you, Matt. And no matter what Michael tells you, you are my favorite radio host, and I love listening to you on KCOW. Love and kisses. Bye-bye. Well, bye-bye, Meme Martino. Well, that was nice. Wow. <laughs> Can you believe that, Christian? Wow. She called all the way from Texas. Well, I did. You know, I did, after I did such a great job on the cattle report. I, you I killed think it. That, you I did, yes. You man. Yes. I'm not used to talking about heifers and cows, but, uh, you know, that was, um, I'll have to kind of work into it a little more. I mean, I got all the information out there, but I don't know if they'll uh, they'll appreciate it. I think they want me to to uh, uh, talk really uh, fast, like I'm an auctioneer. But I don't think I can 1, do that. One thousand dollars going once, one thousand dollars and twice, three times sold to a man in the khaki pants over there sitting on the bleachers. Wow! See, yeah, yeah, you should be the one doing the cattle report. That was fantastic. I mean, you just uh, you practically just sold me a heifer I just did? now. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Sold. Uh, Michael Martino in the Facebook live chat says that does not sound like my meme. Michael, Michael, I, I don't know believe, what you're talking about, my know. man. That clearly was your meme, Michael. I mean, come on, please. Uh, Jenny in the uh, Facebook live chat says, Matt, you are evil. Did I not do a good job on the uh, cattle report? Is You didn't like my cattle report, Jenny. Jenny, don't hand on his cattle report, even though I'll do it next time. I'll yes, talk really yes. fast. Yes, and that, that, will be, uh, that will be much better. Yes. Well, I'll yeah. be on a lot more now. Why is that? Because I work third shift. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, that's and right. And this is literally the highlight of my day. Well, if, yeah, working well, third for shift, the, I imagine the next it few, would be. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The next few days, I have a, I have a crazy schedule, actually. Mm. Why is that? What's your I'm schedule? I'm doing your show. I'm doing the show, and then I'm going tomorrow. I'm going to Stark's Brewery to do an open mic, which I do every week now. Then Wednesday, I'm doing the show. Well, I'm doing John Hopwood's show. I'm doing your show. And then I'm going to Panucci's to do an open mic. And Thursday, I'm doing your show. And that's it, actually. Are, are you still allowed on uh, John Opwood's show? Yes, I think I am. Well, because after you uh, took that tarot card and you put it in the coffee mug. Oh, well, we'll, we'll mug, discuss that. We'll make it through. You, I, I'm a co-host in training there. Jenny says I'm a big meanie. I don't know I don't know why. Jenny. How am I a big meanie? What's it mean about me? I'm never mean. I'm always nice. I don't know, man. I saw a side of you that came out on, on Tony, and I was like, whoa, Oh, man. yeah. I, I was like, whoa, okay, I've never seen Matt yell. But then again, you saw me go go in today. I was like, oh, no, he's not going to call me 14. I am not that 14-year-old awkward kid sitting in the corner in high school. I saw you go in. I was not. not That's what, that is what the young people say yep, now, right? I, I, yes. You went in. You were all oh, the yeah. way in. Okay, we're going to... You were like Q in the deep state. Like, he's all the way in. He doesn't know where he he's is. He's all the way in deep. He doesn't know where he is. He's in the deep state. He thinks he is. Well, that's... Uh, what, you don't believe him? I don't know. He called me 14. Right. Well... We have beef. If he wants to, you know, call back at some point and get on the right... Start off on the right foot and apologize and be a nice person to me, I'll be here. You got beef. Until then, we have beef. You got beef, y'all is beefing. Just like in, that's what just they like say, for right? Cow. Right. You got beef. Right. Well, that is the uh, slogan at KCAL. It is. You're listening to KCAL. We got beef. It's quite uh, quite exciting. I just hope I can live up to their uh, their expectations. If not, I'll help you. Moo. <laughs> so, very nice. We have another call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Matt, this is uh, Michael's meme. Uh, of course it was me calling. And don't let him try to fool you. You know he's a prankster. Obviously it's me. And I love your show. And I look forward to Michael being on again with you. Well, you know he's welcome anytime, as meme. are you, uh, Meme. Meme, Marno. when are you going to send us cookies? Uh, I'm going to send cookies all the way from Texas. And you're they're, they're going to be great. Okay. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna go make them now. Okay. Bye. Can we share them with Mikey? Oh, she hung up. <sighs> I guess we don't share them with Mikey. She hung up. Clearly, that was Michael Martino's meme. I mean, that's because uh, she sounded. Here's how I know. She sounded exactly the same both times. 
She really did. That was really weird. Yeah. I mean, she didn't sound like she was from Texas necessarily, but uh, I don't Good think old she, Texas. I don't think she's from there originally. I mean, I don't know if anybody went to Rob's show, the country classic show. There's some good old music, country music from the, on there. Now, Michael Martineau just shared a... Uh, oh, no. He shared another story? Was it like the oh, last one? wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Cut so the Michael, music. Michael Martineau just... No, nah, I'm just turning it down. No. He just shared a link, a Wikipedia link for KCAL. Right? I don't even know if this station really exists, so I'm of like sitting here. Of course it does. I signed a very lucrative contract with KCAL. Now, now the link that Michael sent me is to the KCAL Wikipedia page. Yeah. But what Michael doesn't realize is that anybody can, can go on Wikipedia and change things. This Wikipedia page has clearly been hacked and is not accurate. It claims that KCAL is a, uh, an AM station uh, that plays oldies music in Alliance, Nebraska. Now, come on. Uh, and and l- let me say this. Why would Michael Martineau's meme call all the way from Dallas-Fort Worth and talk about listening to us on KCAL in Dallas-Fort Worth if the station was actually in Alliance, Nebraska? I rest my case. Oh, boy. Yes. Oh, boy. Looks like I'm going to have to mediate something between you and Mikey now. I'm, oh, just, uh, boy. I'm just saying... Uh, this is clearly, this is probably an outdated Wikipedia page. I really think it is. I mean, uh, I really think it is. I think they did uh, They did actually move uh, to Texas from Nebraska, uh, KCOW, uh, within the last year or something. They're kind of a new station. But they've just exploded in popularity in Texas. Now they're like uh, the biggest uh, in country music and talk radio. Jeez, they should pick up my podcast. <laughs> well, they... Maybe. I don't know if they have room. Because what they do is they run this show live, and then it just repeats over and over on a loop. Oh, really? Yeah, this is the only show they're carrying at this point. Well, well, Matt, you're the man of many hats here. I just wear this one hat, actually. Oh, well, I wear the well, same well, hat every well. day. Ma- many talents, my bad. My- many talents, my bad. I have a hat uh, that Jenny... You tried uh, to hit on your hat, man. That really got to me today. I have a hat that Jenny got me. Uh, from the Netherlands that I can't wear until I get a haircut because uh, I, I my you. my hair gets caught in the Velcro. I feel you. I have to get a haircut too. Yes. Uh, let's see. Michael Martino just shared another link. Oh, Mikey, you're uh, not done this fight yet. I hope. Um, I hope this isn't more uh, disinformation. Oh boy. Let's see. Oh boy. Here we go. This is. Uh, this is a, uh, looks like it's a Facebook page. It's taking a little while to load. Oh, he's really doing, he's really digging in. Let's see here. It's loading. Uh, let's see. This has KCAL. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the official, uh, FCC government website that has, uh, KCAL, uh, listed in, uh, uh, Alliance, Nebraska. Well, the thing is, uh, Michael... Uh, you know, these government websites, they're not always accurate and up to date. I mean, geez, I was on a government website the other day and, uh, it still had a picture of Barack Obama as president on it. So you really can't depend on these government websites, uh, Michael. I mean, uh, clearly this is just, uh, some outdated information, sir. Just saying. Oh boy. Yes. Yes. Clearly. I mean, I mean, please. Uh, Jenny's uh, call. It, Jenny says Matt is a big jerk, jerky boy. Matt. Oh, she's still mad at you. I think she's jealous uh, of the fact that I'm so successful in the Dallas Fort Worth market. <sighs> Maybe. Yes. Clearly, I mean I'm probably the biggest uh, star in radio in that entire uh, area. I should probably start Matt. wearing a different kind of hat. I should probably start wearing a ten gallon hat. Although, I don't know if I want That's awfully heavy. Yeah. But heavy is the head that wears the crown. I don't think you'll be able to fit through the door, though. Right. That's true. Well, I can, I can like, squeeze it through. 
I could squeeze it through, he says. Yeah, I'll just squeeze it through the door. I mean, I, I'll, I'll do what I have to do. But, uh, you know, I want to continue this uh, rousing success that we are on KCOW. For real. Yes. I'm glad my voice is nationwide now. You Well, not really. I mean, you're on in uh, Manchester and uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. Close enough. Yes, I, th- that's true. And we're live on tune. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, no, we do have, uh, we do have listeners in uh, many... Many parts of Idaho, the country, man. that's true. Brian Mackey is from Idaho. Uh, Jenny says, oh, you're going to get it, jerky boy. Oh, uh, she's going to fight you. No, I... Should, should I Should I protect you? Well, I... Should I be your bodyguard today? It's going to be either you or Matt Gates. I'm telling you. No, nah, Matt Gates can do it. Yes. Oh. No, but it is very exciting. Oh, Michael's uh, sharing another link here. Let's see what Live. this is. Uh... Nielsen Station Information Profiles. Let's see what this is. Oh, he's still not done this, is he? This is from Arbitron.com. Uh, this has KCAL listed as 1400 AM, uh, the classic hits format. Uh, let's see, in Alliance, Nebraska. Well, that, yeah, the thing is, uh, Michael, I mean, clearly this website, I mean, just look at it. It looks like it was built in, like, 1998 or something. I'm sure it hasn't even been updated in the last 20 years. I mean, clearly, clearly this is erroneous information on this website, sir. I mean, I would pay no attention to that if I were you. I mean, it's uh, a good try, but uh, come on. No, no, no. I think uh, I think all the folks in Dallas-Fort Worth would tell you that uh, you have been misled, sir, uh, by these... Uh, I don't know where you're getting all these websites from. It's like you uh, you might as well be going to some weird conspiracy theory site or something at this rate. You might as well be going to Alex Jones' site, InfoWars, for uh, information about radio stations uh, at, th- at this rate. I mean, come on. Please. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know what to make of this. Well, let's see. The um, We're almost out of time. Aw. I think... Let me see. Let's check on the hearings. They're not done yet? Oh, I think they're wrapping up. The uh, gentleman, uh, Mr. Stubbe, has already been recognized. He has the time. So are you going to recognize him after for his parliamentary inquiry after my question? I'll make an announcement about schedule shortly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've never seen a more partisan spectacle than what I've witnessed here today. Democrats want the rules to apply when it benefits them and not to apply when Republicans invoke them. Nine hours ago. That's uh, Greg Stubbe of Florida. I don't like the way he says benefits. He says benefits. He puts the, uh, emph- the, uh, the emphasis on the wrong syllable. It really bothers me. Well, let's see. So uh, we're just about out of time. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan plaza at 1000 elm street from the studios of wmnh 95.3 fm in downtown manchester new hampshire you are tuned in to the best of matt connerton unleashed now this is interesting uh from mediaite uh sean hannity defending uh ainsley uh earnhardt from howard stern mocking her faith you know uh sean hannity who uh, as he gets older, he looks more and more like an angry ape man to me. Uh, he used to be a big fan of Howard Stern. And uh, oh, really? I think they were they might have even been friends. But uh, now he's very upset because Howard Stern the other day interviewed former uh, Democratic candidate for the presidency, Hillary Clinton. Oh, really? Yes. Is that filthy show? It's not that filthy anymore, EZG. Howard is... Uh, he's a really... he's. He's, he's evolved. I mean, yeah. you know, do you really want to hear a 65-year-old man uh, talking about yeah, strippers true. and porn stars? Yeah, I mean, true, you're right. you know, come on. I mean, it, so what did Hillary say? It's bad enough Hillary. you do that on the show, Easy. Yeah. I mean, it gets really filthy around yeah. here. But, uh, what did Hillary talk about? Well, she talked about, um, I haven't watched the whole thing yet. It's a couple of hours long, but 
Really? Um, yeah, but she went in depth about, you know, how she felt after the election, how difficult that was for her. And, uh, you know, Howard had a, a lot of questions about that. You know, and Howard supported her in, in 2016. Does, he does was so last a couple hours. The interview did. Yeah. Well, he's on for like four hours. Why, why didn't know that? Oh, yes. Yes. What time's on? What time is he on? You know? I think six to ten. In the morning? Yeah. Oh, really? He's a, he's a, he's a morning drive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he always has been. He shows from New York? Well, Morning Drive is, yeah, yeah, from Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Well, Morning Drive is like, you know how like uh, 8 to 11 is prime time in television? Morning right. Morning Drive is really prime time in radio. Oh, all right. So when you're on the morning show with Peter White, you're in prime time, Easy G. Oh, wow. You've got the prime spot. Well, I forget the guy's name, but there's a guy coming to the Rex Theater that he's, he's big on the uh, Simus Radio. I mean, uh, he's big on the uh, Satellite Radio. The guy who's coming to the Rex Theater? Yeah. Um, what he hosts a show on uh, satellite? Yeah. yeah, he does. The tickets are really expensive. Like the first couple, rolls they're like a hundred and forty dollars. Oh my I god, is that. it Howard Stern? No, no, oh. some guy I never heard of. No, oh. exactly. Guy, that's why I'm not paying a hundred forty dollars to go to like the a Rex lawyer and see and this guy talk. He does mo- numerous things. Is he Howard Stern's lawyer? I'm gonna look it up. No, oh. he's got a big long name. I think his first name is Michael. Mm. I brought it up on the morning show. Peter said, "Who? Oh. never heard of him. It's not Michael Smirconish, is it?" Yes. It is Michael Smirconish? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I like him. Michael Smirconish is interesting because he's, um, you know, typically in uh, political talk radio, um, conservative uh, hosts oh, I didn't know he was political. really kind of dominate. Yeah. But, you know, conservative talk radio hosts like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and whatnot, they're the most successful. And there is some liberal programming like Arnie Arneson has a show uh, that's pretty successful. But, um, but Michael Smirconish is an independent. He was a Republican up until, I think, sometime in the George W. Bush administration, and then he became an independent. But um, he's the only independent that I know of who has a mainstream, nationally syndicated political talk show. Oh, really? You know, because usually you got to be on one side or the other. And like I said, conservative talk really is what dominates in that space, you know? Do people pay 140 bucks to see him at the Rex Theater? Well, that's a little interesting. I don't know I'm why. I'm going to look it up because I don't believe it was that guy. Yeah, I'm not sure what Michael Smirconish would be doing that would cost 104 uh, unless maybe he's doing like a like a Vegas show as as uh, as part of his uh, act. I don't know. That'd be interesting. He doesn't seem like the type though. It's on the uh it's on the website. Hmm. On the Rex Theater website? Yep. Oh. That's what I'm pulling up now or attempting to if you want to do that. Right. I could be getting his last name wrong, but I swear it's a guy named Michael. Hmm. I pronounce his last name, and I don't dare. The dragon Dion was making fun of me, saying, what's his last name? <laughs> I always butcher people's names. I heard you the other day trying to say uh, Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, that was a repeat episode, yeah. But to be fair, that's French. Yes, even though I am a Canadian. <gasps> you are? Uh, heritage, yes. Oh, yes. Do you, I, don't, I don't speak that good. Do you have Canadian uh, citizenship, EZG? No. you have but, dual citizenship? No, but it's the Canadian blood in me. Yeah, so. uh, you've got that Canadian blood. But I don't know how to speak French. Can you honestly claim to be a real American with that Canadian blood? Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Hmm. When the uh, Boston uh, Bruins are playing the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, in your heart, who do you root for? Always the Bruins. Hmm. You said that awfully quickly, EZG, almost as though that was a pre-programmed answer. Like you were ready for that question <laughs> yeah. because you're suspicious of others being suspicious. Hey, I just realized something. What is hanging from your shirt? You got some sort of button there or something. What's going oh, on over there? Celtics. Oh. I had wearing button, a... I had that button since the eighties when Larry Bird was in town. You've had that button since the nineteen eighties? Yeah, we bought it at Collective Seven. Wow. Like a couple of dollars. Yeah. How much do you think it's worth now? Like three dollars? Yeah, probably. Probably. Because you gotta figure with inflation, right? Yeah. You've had that button for decades? I don't know if I have any clothing that I've had for decades. Well, that's not clothing. That's no, a, uh, I've had that button. That's my, one of my favorite buttons. Yeah. I notice it covers uh, one of your enormous pecs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you find that guy's name? No. I thought, were you looking it up? Or? I thought EZG was looking it up because he's oh, yeah. the, oh, he, right. he I, the I entertainment reporter. I'm explaining uh, why I need two laptops for my podcast. Right. Oh, you explain Try, that, I'll try to find it. But I'm trying I, to... I think, what ha- sell that. I think what happened is EZG was looking it up, and then I distracted him with questions about his enormous button. 
Hello to Mike Palapita, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. Well, yes, indeed. So, um, oh, what was that? Oh, yeah. So there's a clip here of Hannity. Apparently, so Sean Hannity, basically, because of the Hillary Clinton interview, Sean Hannity doesn't like Howard anymore. He's uh, he's put Howard on the pay no mind list. And um, apparently he's mad at Howard uh, for uh, something that he had said about Ainsley er- Earhart. Now, I usually refer to Ainsley Earhart as the token blonde who sits in the middle. Because on Fox and Friends, uh, on uh, in the mornings on Fox, you know you have uh, you've got the three hosts. You've got uh, Steve Dushi, uh, Brian Kilme. I'm still not sure I'm saying their names exactly correctly. And you've got the token blonde who sits in the middle, uh, who currently is Ainsley uh, Earnhardt. Is it Earnhardt or Earnhardt or something? I don't know. She's got too many consonants and not enough vowels in her name. But uh, let's hear what uh, Sean Hannity has to say about this. Oh, geez, this interview is 11 minutes. Never mind. (laughs) I'll just read the uh, text here. So it says uh, Hannity defended Earnhardt from radio commentator Howard Stern during an interview on Ainsley's Bible study set to air this week. Easy G, do you watch that program, Ainsley's uh, Bible study? You are the most godly among us here. Yeah. Oh, you watch it, uh, Christian? No. Well, your name is Christian. We we went over this, right? We over went over my religion. Oh, beliefs. that's right. Yes, did and we though? I don't even remember that. I don't lean towards religion anymore. Yeah, I just don't. No, no imaginary friend for you. No. Okay. Okay. I got this guy's name. Sorry, oh, thank goodness! Breaking it's, news. Easy G has his name. Michael uh, S M E R C O N I C H. That is him, Michael Smirkanish. American Life in Columbus is the, is the name of the show. Huh. American Life in, in uh, C-O-L-U-M-N-S. Oh. I don't know well. what that's about. Oh, American Life in Columns, because he's also a columnist. Yeah, he's a lawyer, too. Yeah. So February 9th, yeah, and then we see what the... Uh... And he's one of those guys who shaves his head bald and can really pull it off. Really? Yeah, he looks good. He Never looks good. I only hope that when the time comes, I have a head shaped like him. <laughs> yeah. I envy his head. He's got a good shaped <laughs> head. I I crossed my mind to go to go bald today. I was thinking about it, but then I was like, no. Right. Well, well it's I not see, something you decide. It I, just happens. I messed up. The tickets are going for forty dollars. Forty dollars. Oh, that sounds more reasonable. With all due respect, to a hundred and four dollars, not a hundred and forty dollars. Oh, okay. That sounds and, more reasonable. And the balcony is forty nine dollars. This is so, <laughs> this is pretty uh, unreasonable in my book. Oh, I don't know. I mean, he's he's pretty awesome. And uh, the hundred four dollars, I assume, includes. A meet and greet, and uh, perhaps you get to enjoy uh, some delicious cheese with uh, Michael Smirkanish. I think that would be fun. I'd like to hang Mm. out with Michael Smirkanish. I'd like to have a conversation with him, get his thoughts on some things, and maybe have some delicious extra sharp cheddar. We should try to pull it off and get him. That would be great. Yes, yes. Let's see if we can talk. I'll offer him cheese. I don't know if he even likes cheese. (laughs) What do you think, EZG? You look like you're contemplating it. Do you think Michael Smirkanish likes cheese? Uh, unless he's lactose intolerant. Right, which he could be. But here's the thing. Smirconish sounds like a kind of cheese to me. That's what put the idea into my head. Just like our friend who shows up in the Facebook live chat, Archie Frangutis. Frangutis sounds like cheese, and frankly, so does Smirconish. Is uh, Gonzo in the live, in the, uh, in the uh, room this, mo- uh, this morning? Is he in the Facebook live room? Michael Gonzalez, right. uh, also known as Gonzo. I don't see him in there currently. Why? Is he lactose intolerant? No, well, if he's not in there, I'll just send him a uh, text letter because I want to see his uh, art on the wall over at City Hall today. What was it? He put some um, art on the wall. Oh. City Hall. Art, uh, wow, that's, that, that last rhymes. Week, last Thursday. You sound like you're rapping. He put some art in the wall at City Hall. Yeah, so he did a good job. He's an he's an artist. That's what he does. You did a good job on that rap you just wrote. That that those lyrics are fire. So I'll send him a text letter. Right. Yeah. Send him a text. Great job at City Hall. Great job at City Hall. Yes. Better job than I could do. So. But how do you know? Have you tried? Have you ever tried your hand at art? I'm not really that good. Right. You're more of a audio uh, guy. Mm. You know, with yeah. the with the rapping. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really is. I heard he's been dropping down, dropping some sick, sick b- beats down recently for his new album. 
Well, he's due for a comeback, you know. Yeah, it's called EZG Revived. Right, yes. Well, of course, we all have, uh, I mean, I think everyone has in their collection, uh, you know, uh, EZG's, uh, you know, as Hard G, of course, his uh, hip-hop name he released in 1988. Yeah, Hard G Revived, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. right, the the new uh, album, yeah. But uh, let's see, there was, what, what was it, in 88 you put out, what was it, uh, <laughs> G the Hard Way, oh, I think was the yeah, first yeah. one. I don't remember that one. And then in 1990, <laughs> he had his seminal double album. Yeah, that was his Billboard hit, yeah. Right, right. His, he had that album. Uh, it was a double album. It was called Hard to Be Easy, Easy to Be Hard. And oh, that boy. was... Uh, There's like 24 songs on that one. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting there and I was like, wow. It was man. like quintuple I was, platinum. I wasn't born when that was released, but I... I started listening to it when I when I hit the when I hit like middle school and I really liked it. Yeah, well, I think everyone. I mean, you know, look, it was Eminem and it was Easy G. Yeah, you know, white boys into house at that time. Yeah, in that period no, of hip hop. Heard from that guy Eminem lately. What's he been up to? Well, Eminem? I heard you and him is beefing. You all got beef. Yeah, y'all beefing. He 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 put out a diss track the other day on you. Oh no. Really? Yeah. You got to hurry up and get that uh, Easy G revived out. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, I know. He goes, oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go again with a diss track. He's so overwhelmed. He's uh, falling asleep over there. Yeah. You should team up again with, with uh, M. Sizzle. Greatest rapper alive. Yeah. Speaking of white boys, M. Sizzle. Who's M. Sizzle? M. Sizzle in the house. You've never heard of M. Sizzle? No. Oh, my goodness. Well. Might have to play you some. Oh, boy. <laughs> I might have to play you some M. Sizzle. You're just jonesing for some M. Sizzle, aren't you, EZG? Yeah, if it's what I think it is. You're over there. You're jonesing. You're like, M. Sizzle. Oh, my goodness. I thought we weren't playing that anymore. Really? Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when M. Sizzle might make a comeback. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Oh, boy. So, uh, <laughs> you, you just never know. Yeah, that guy over the couch doesn't know. Oh, yeah. Christian, yeah, he doesn't know. He doesn't nope. know about M. Sizzle. <laughs> yeah, we probably should lay it on him. Then. Lay it on him? Yeah, lay wow, it on him. Wow, you're using the hip lingo there, Easy G. It really is. That's what the young people say now. They say, lay it on him. Give, give, him, a, give him a lesson. Let's M. Sizzle, he's the greatest rapper alive, yo. Let's do it. That's what's up. Let's hear it. Well, I want to hear him. Y'all just did. Y'all, you already know. M. Sizzle in the house. All right, guys, that's a wrap for the show today. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> y'all not feeling the M. Sizzle? No, are you M. Sizzle now? <laughs> Word. That goes by many. Names. Okay, that just almost went over my head. Uh, All right, it's, dude. It's an honor to meet you, M. Sizzle. It really is, man. <laughs> Y'all not playing? No, I'm not playing. I don't know if, I don't know if you heard the uh, the the guy you kind of look like the uh, the wrestler Matt Hardy. Looks like his days and numbers. The hard boy. WWE. Who, who looks like Matt Hardy? You do. A little Apparently, bit. you do, but you, I don't see it. You think I look like Matt Hardy? A little bit, yeah. I don't have the streak of gray hair. Jenny would be would be uh, thrilled to hear you say that if she's still listening because uh, she loves uh, broken Matt Hardy. Yeah, but it looks like his days and numbers. And, uh, his comeback. His uh, contract is up in February, and he might. Uh, his brother's got some drug issues or drinking. Or... Yeah, Jeff Hardy's been in some trouble. Yeah, yeah, that might be it for the Hardys in WWE. You think I look like Matt Hardy? A little bit, yeah. I told you that before. I don't remember you ever saying that. I have really not for a while. Mm. First time I saw you, I said, "I look like Matt Hardy." Delightful. Is it because I say that sometimes? Mm. There was a couple guys uh, on the on the website today. They they got uh, they got thirty game, thirty yeah thirty day suspension for a uh, drug abuse. Who did? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Some of the wrestlers. Yeah, a lot of activity in wrestling these days. A couple of guys got got um let go of their contracts. And... I think it's a bad. Uh, I think this wrestling is a bad influence on you, EZG. Well, they got to give a they got to sign some kind of ninety day. Um, 90 day thing where they can't just jump to another uh, profession like AEW or Japan or. Yeah, so no compete clause. Right. Yes. I guess there's a rumor going around that, that they, uh, they're going to might release some more wrestlers that aren't happy. Make room for some other guys that he wants to bring in. There's a lot of rumors on the street. Yeah, rumors on the street. That's right. He said, Mr. Man, they're going to go after the, uh, 
Kenny Omega and uh, the Young Bucks. Well, so not, try to lay money on the table. Well, he'd have to lay a lot of money on the table because of AEW. Oh, this man's got a lot of money. Yeah, but the the Khan family that runs AEW, they have even more. They have more money than Vince. These are just rumors I heard today. Though. They're like multi billionaires. Charlotte Flair is, uh, might leave. These are just rumors that I heard mm-hmm. on the street. Just rumors on the street that I heard on the wrestling website. That was, of course, your big single from uh, your uh, double album in 1990. Hard to be easy, easy to be hard. But he figures if he can get some of the, some of the big stars to come over from AEW, he'll destroy them. That's, that's his plan. I right. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. Oh, yeah. So finishing up on this. Uh, so during the interview that will air on Fox Nation on Wednesday, Hannity brought up an episode of Stern's show from May where the radio shock jock mocked the Fox and Friends host's faith Referring to Stern's comments, Hannity said Stern, quote, doesn't seem to think ever about the majesty of God or the need for the spiritual component and does not understand. Howard's gift is he's raw. He'll say what others won't say, uh, unquote, Hannity said, before noting that Stern, quote, was totally making fun of your Bible study. Um, Well, Howard is an atheist. They actually brought that up um, during Howard's interview with Hillary, he asked her if she was deeply religious. And apparently she is. She is a Methodist. Now, EZG, as our faith correspondent, what is uh, Methodism? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I've never been a Methodist. I was Methodist. You were Methodist. I converted over to just not caring. Right. So is Methodist I don't know what to like... I call that yet. Is, is Methodist like one step away from not caring? <laughs> It'll drive you to that point. No, I'm joking. Um, no, it's more of like, it's a protest, it's more of a Protestant religion type thing. Yes. But it's hard to explain. What about, now our president is a, uh, who of course is our most godly. Hillary Clinton is a Methodist. Right, Hillary is a Methodist, yes. That's what she told Howard. And she believes in an afterlife and everything. But, uh, our most godly president, of course, uh, Donald John Trump is a Presbyterian. Now, do either of you know what the difference is between a Presbyterian and a Methodist? Nope. Uh, no. Oh, me neither. That's weird. I know, right? What was the Presbyterian? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know where all these things come from. I don't know. It's too confusing. Isn't there only Religion one God? It's too confusing, folks. It is. It's wicked confusing. Um, So Hannity also said, quote, Now I've interviewed Howard on radio and on TV. I've admired him a lot. He's a great champion. But I remember asking him, Howard, I read that you go see a shrink five days a week. I read that you go home and smoke pot in your basement and watch porn. I'm like, you have more money than God, you know, almost as much. And he's like, I know, I know. Honest as he is, he doesn't have what you have, which is he doesn't seem to think ever about the majesty of God or the need for the spiritual component. There is no doubt in my life, in my mind, that we are mind, body, and spirit. There is a spiritual component to this experience on earth. I have felt in moments of my life that I know I'm in the right place in my life. I have felt it. It touched me deeply. I knew it. I understood it. And I loved it. You're confident when you believe in God. So he was just making fun of it. You were talking about how, you know, you felt the presence of God coming in your life during a tough time, unquote, the Fox News host said, adding that he thought Stern's jokes made Earnhardt look good. So... There you go. Now, I would guess that if I had the kind of money that Sean Hannity had, I also would often think I'm in the right place in my life. And praise be to the Lord. What do you think, Easy G? Yeah, Sean Hannity, I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of uh, Sean Hannity? No, I don't like his radio show. Right, but he's a very godly man himself. Yeah, you know, just because he says he is doesn't make him one. <sighs> I've heard him a few times. Uh, yeah, my mother's, uh. not, my mother's not a fan either. Uh, why doesn't your mother like him? She's boring. Uh. Well, I'll tell you, uh, he does kind of just uh, sit there and recite Republican talking points. Right. Uh, let's see, Brian Mackey from Idaho, who is, uh, of course, uh, a top fan, uh, says a member of a Christian Protestant denomination uh, originating in the 18th century. Is that... Uh, uh, the Methodists? 
I believe it's a Methodist. I believe John Wesley started it. John Wesley? Yeah. Um, back in like the 1800s. Why do they call them Ingley. Methodists? They see, if I if I started something, I'd want it to be called like uh, Madism or something. Exactly, that's what I was saying. But I'm very uh, I'm very selfish. That I way. don't know, man. It's like I was thinking about it the other day, and because I did I did a whole report on it down in uh, high school when I was in high school, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not a fan of this anymore. After reading up reading up about it and everything, I was like, I'm done. But what was it about it, Christian? What was it about it that turned you away from the Lord right. and, and on All the right. path of Satan? Uh, I'm not on the path of <laughs> Satan. Whoa, that, that's assuming stuff. Well, I mean, it's, uh, is, is, it, is it not one or the other? I mean, you either walk with the Lord or you're worshiping Satan at DEF CON or, shows with Jeff Scumpy Lorenz. <laughs> well, well uh, poor Michael Marno is getting tossed out on his arse. Oh, boy. Yes. No, it's... Tell the us about your walk with the I devil. I just don't care about religion. Running I'm not with the devil. <laughs> Are you done? I am. Yes, okay. go, yes go ahead. <laughs> um, wrong. Well, you're not going to put the camera on me either? Well, sometimes I like to put it on Easy G when he's yawning. Yeah, I fall off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, probably a good idea because I'm about to, about to make myself so controversial. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, no, yeah not because of believe- Satan. Sorry. I'm not going to believe in, like, something, you know, when it's kind of it's kind of, kind of, kind of time-consuming and I'm led to believe something then I, that I don't really feel, you know. You won't walk with the Lord because you feel it's time-consuming? No, I won't walk whatever you said. <laughs> With whatever's up there. Am I a spiritual person? Do I believe there's something up there? Yes. Mm. But I don't believe it's a person or something telling us to do something. I believe there's clouds. Yeah, me too. Mm. Lots of clouds right now. Mm. But it's like... You might might change your mind later on. You're still a young kid. I might. Good point, um, EZG. I wasn't much into religion back then either. I used to Mm. be. I used to be. I started out in church by myself and then my dad joined me. Now I'm like, you know what? It's... Might be the church I'm going to. It might not be. I don't know. Like, I'm just too focused on myself and call me self centered if Ooh. you want, but like, I don't have time to believe in something I don't feel. That's the influence of Satan. <laughs> Satan. Satan says, fo- <laughs> Are you done? Satan says, Focus on yourself. <laughs> I can't with you today, Matt. Satan says, "Ignore God and just focus on yourself." Blah. <laughs> well, Satan used to be one of uh, God's favorite angels. That's true. They had a bit of a falling out. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah just like was, me and Matt are about guy. to do if he if he decides to do that again. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That was funny. Brian Mackey says, "Connertonism." I like the sound of that. I like that. Now, Easy G, you mentioned that at one time you were not into religion. What was it that turned you away from Satan? And uh, to uh, d- uh, drew you to walk with the Lord, thus ensuring your uh, place in uh, heaven well, for all eternity. I still make mistakes, but I'm not, oh. I'm not perfect out there. Mm-hmm. But the uh, I joined this, uh, I wasn't really much into religion my first, I mean, I still went to church and stuff, went through the motions, but yeah, I did all the uh, stuff you're supposed to do. But the, uh, when I joined a uh, prayer group uh, back in the day over at um, St. Elizabeth Seed called Stepping Stones, and I met a lot of good friends, and I'm still friends with them now. Even though I don't technically go to uh, Catholic churches a lot anymore. But, right. Uh, I go to uh, Mr. Christian Church. I go to Grace Church, First Church. They're not really Catholic churches. <laughs> right, right. So I tend to bounce around, even though some of my friends don't really like that. But... Do they They don't like that? Do they judge you for it? Well, Because uh, that was a big thing. Uh, I... At times they do. Uh, right, and, uh, and you but can't blame them. hang around with me, though. Because I think that was a big thing in the Bible, right? Because, like, was, isn't there that story in the Bible where... Uh, well, it's so easy to judge people, though. There's that story in the Bible where Jesus is like, you know, they're about to stone somebody, and yeah. Jesus is like, hey, if you're going to stone this guy, have at it, Hoss. Oh, yeah. Or well, something like that. I don't know if I have that quite right. No, I'm not, it, ex- I'm not it exactly... It was a woman at the, at the well. And oh, they were, I'm they sorry. They were to death for, for adultery. Right, right. And Jesus and was said, like, yeah, go ahead, because she deserves it or no, something, right? No, he said... Whoever throws the first stone is the one without no sin. Oh, but he was being ironic. Uh, clearly, so they he wanted the, them. They all threw the rocks down because they all had sins. So oh, that, okay. That that. I, sometimes I get these things wrong. I'm not exactly what you'd consider a master theologian. But back then, the people uh, were stoned to death for 
for uh for, for mistakes. Yes, yes. So if that was the case. The uh, Donald Trump's should be stoned to death, according, <laughs> to the, according to the Democrats. According Ooh. to the Democrats, right? For his mistakes, but guess what? They, they all have sins too, so they, they won't be able to throw any stones at him. Everybody must get stoned. Easy G is is what it sounds like you're saying. Well, Everybody the, the Democrats must are throwing get stones stoned. at the uh, Trump right now. Brian, I'm not a Trumpster, by the way. Right, you are not, which I appreciate about you. Brian Mackey says, falling out. I see what you did there. <laughs> and Ed Murphy joins us uh, in the Facebook oh, live chat. Oh, hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Ed helped you move. I heard Ed. I heard Ed throw some pretty legendary Halloween parties. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was like, wow, a Halloween party? Maybe he'll throw a Christmas party at some point. You know, I'm bummed. I haven't got invited to no Christmas parties this year. Perhaps it's your grammar. What are you saying, Matt? Well, perhaps if you said you hadn't been invited to any Christmas parties this year, someone would invite you to a Christmas party. I appreciate my rough my roughness <laughs> around the edges, Matt, okay? With my with my rough grammar. Okay. <laughs> Your rough grammar. That was uh, I can invent words off the top of my head you wouldn't even think of. That was the name of Easy G's fourth album, Rough Grammar. Oh yeah. Like, by Hard that, G. Dude, that was a good album. That, that was, was a good a great album. album, man. Yes. I went insane. I would sit in my room screaming the lyrics. Yeah. Oh, it's about, get, uh, excuse me. It's about that time I'm gonna have to hit the road. Oh my goodness! Uh, that's that's an, that's an, that's the name of his next album. Hit the <laughs> road. Are you going to church? Uh, no, not tonight. Okay. He's going on a date. <laughs> no, no, no dates. No dates. No. But you and Michael Mar know okay. You're not jealous. Oh no, you can you can you can. Uh, that's the first thing go. I thought of. <laughs> he can have her. Oh, that's right. She's a smoker. Yeah, we're still friends. She gave me she gave me her home last Tuesday. Never. Right. Right. Oh. So you're still willing to be friends with her as long as she gives you a ride home. Right. You just don't want to date her because she smokes. Well, I, I, I feel like this is a conflict of interest. Work out, so that's all right. Wait, what? Say that again? I said I asked her out a while back. Oh, that's it, right. it didn't work out, but that's all right. Forgot about that. <laughs> We're still friends. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like when when, uh, when Peter was, was uh, joking around with me about um, Amanda McCarthy, I said it would be kind of awkward. If the Amanda was going out, and then it didn't work out, and I was still showing up at her shows. All right, so, so here's my... So it's a good idea that we're just friends. Right, yes. That, he has a boyfriend. I have to say, uh, that's... Uh, uh, boyfriend is Tom the Drummer Boy. So. That's uh, Tom the Drummer Boy, he says. Right. All right, so here's my here's my view on all this. Very mature of you, by the way, very mature. Yeah. Here's my view on all this relationship stuff. <laughs> all right? Y'all do what you want to do. But we're all on the radio at the same time, you know. Sometime we're all going to meet up in the studio at the same time and be on the same show. All right? It'll be Mikey, Priscilla, uh, Ver- Veronet, <laughs> me, and you, okay? And Matt. At some point in time. What if things don't work out? What if somebody dates somebody and then it don't work out? That's going to be really awkward. And then avenues are going to be ruined bridges are going to be burned yeah, you're right you probably shouldn't date anybody that's my love advice on the way out you probably shouldn't date anybody <laughs> on the radio you might see you. on the radio you're right because uh, you're right Chris then if it doesn't it's a work conflict out of interest that's, that's why that's good advice that is good advice that's very mature of you christian yes guys i can give <laughs> great relationship advice don't I just can't take it don't dip your pit your pen in the company ink is what you're saying yeah exactly yes I think that's good, and that's good I'm advice. I'm head right G. over there to the news desk now. Actually, oh, oh you're gonna uh, go, go jump on the news desk. Let's yes. do it. All right.
Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. From the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, you are tuned in to the best of Matt Connerton Unleashed. Oh, go open the door, Mike. Oh, there we go. Hello. So our guest has arrived. Where should she sit? She can sit right there. Oh, okay. How are we doing with that camera angle? Do we need to get... Do we need someone to adjust it? Hey! No, we're all right. Put all right. the tarot card back up. It fell down and staying down. We're not giving them free publicity, okay? The Hop Knot proudly sponsors us. Yes. Let them do their thing. Oh, thank oh, you. You're going you're gonna to learn some things in life. Don't put... No, don't... Oh, he's screwed now. I just put Whatever the tarot card Whatever you were talking the about mug. upstairs. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you Hi. believe in the tarot gods? I do in a way. There you go. Really? When they say good stuff. Well, there you go. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, they, so, they, it did have a good message you... for. Well, who's that guy that called earlier? Tony. Tony. Miss, I don't know if you've been listening to the show since you've got here, but it's been a pretty wild show. Matt and <laughs> someone just got into an argument. It was pretty wild. Um, yeah, I basically, you just walked into a. Um, well, things are calmed down now. Well, Everything's yeah, a little settled, bit. But... I missed all the fun. Well, except no. For, except it. for John over here giving me crap about tarot cards and stuff. <laughs> Well, you're you're really uh, you know rolling the dice in a bad way, dude. That's what I do. That's the game I play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Diane is here. Diane, Hi. Uh, I I always butcher your last name. Ruggiero. Ruggiero. Am I saying that right? You did it. Ruggiero. It's it, perfect. You're a fan of the Sopranos. You can't stir those. <laughs> I know. Pronto an Italian name. I, I always think it's a soft G. I always say Ruggiero, <laughs> but it's Ruggiero. As long as you don't say Ruggiero. Right, right. Because then my father will kill you. Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> and uh, you've brought... Whack him. You've brought a mug. I brought you a present because I know you Santa love Paws. posting about your cat. Oh. Yes, yes. And look at the socks. Pull out the socks. If you're uh, if you're watching online, you can see the mug, the Santa mug. And it Paws has a mug. little kitty toy. There. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. The, the kitties will love that. <laughs> and uh, socks that say holiday hunk. <laughs> wow. Are you sure these aren't for Easy G? <laughs> Easy G. Eric Agnon's not here today, but uh, no, well, thank you, uh, thank you so much, you're uh, Diane. That's wonderful. I hey, very much for appreciate having it. Me on. Of course, of course. Well, you're always welcome. Thank you. But uh, but of course, we're going to uh, feature some of your music today. Thank you. What what's uh, before we play something? What's uh, what's been going on? It's been actually a very long time <sighs> since you've been here. What like a year? It's, two years? I think <gasps> no, it hasn't been. No, two years. a year and a half. Uh, no, I think you were here. Because I have an email from you from back in January, I oh, think. Oh, you sent my email? That's a year. <laughs> well, when I search your name, they all gotcha. come up. So, Because no, I was looking for, for the music. Gotcha. Because you, you sent a few things. I know. Was I being crazy? No, no, no. No, that? that's good. <laughs> it's good that you sent uh, several things. Um, hey, no, but, did you fail to cover the spread or something? Or did somebody break one of your fingers? Oh, my gosh. You know what I did? Thanksgiving, I tried to catch a knife. <laughs> what? I, I have a scar from that. <laughs> no, <door. laughs> no, it wasn't like that. It was like impulse. Like I draw, I'm dropping the knife, and I oh. went to try to grab the handle, and it's like razor sharp. And I, so that's oh funny. wow, oh, I stopped the knife thrown by a woman. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Wow, Eighteen. jeez. Let me Tell see. Where's your blood. scar? You have a scar? It's there. You can barely see it now. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, but that's. 42 years ago. Wow. Celts are hot-blooded people, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh. A lot of Celts in northern Italy. Really? Oh, yeah. You see red-haired, to... blue eyed and blonde. And the, well, yeah. you know, because they uh, integrated with the Norway, right? Well, there's Sweden? an alpine. Well, that's down in uh, Sicily. Not... Like, they have blue eyed because of the the uh, the uh, Vikings controlled it. I and they went all Vikings. the way down... The Russia too, all the way down the wow. river. But uh, up north, there's a called an Alpine race, and they're blonde haired, blue eyed. And so when you get up my to northern Italy, my grandmother was yeah. blonde and blue eyed. Yeah. So my and, daughter became blonde and blue eyed. Isn't that crazy? Huh. Now here's yeah. the real wow. thing: when Rudy Giuliani was elected mayor, 
he b- brought a chef into Gracie Mansion, which is, you know, like the White House of New York. Northern Italian cuisine. There's two the million, best. back then, <laughs> two million Italians, you know. It used to be two million Italians, two million Ju- uh, <laughs> Jews, like a million and a half Irish and, blah, blah, you know, it was uh-huh. big ethnic groups. All the Italians were angry because, <laughs> you know, most of the Italians that came here were from Naples and below. Naples, so. that was all my family. Yeah. Yep. Right. Well, so what's uh, what's been going on, Diane? Um, music. Oh my, so much music. Yeah. So I had a chance to work at Rocking Horse Studio, which Rocking Horse Studio. I know them. Great, oh yeah, great. I know Rocking Horse Studio. Okay, right. He's Evelyn Cormier is out of there too. Oh yeah, definitely. He's got great as well. And then I went to Mojo Studios, and they're great. Like, there's so many great people around here. I'm so grateful. Yeah. And blessed that. So Joe, I knew back in the day, like when. Um, he had the Uncle Joe show. Do you remember that? It was on. What yes, it, it was on the planet. I think. Well, that wasn't. No, it wasn't planet, on the but planet. But was, uh, but I but I know the show you're talking about. That was on for a long time, wasn't it? It was. And yeah. I had I actually had him do one of a jingle I did. He actually did the little commentary part, part to it. And he and Anthony he plays bass and Anthony plays the drums. So they were like right on this Jolly Holly Christmas song. Yeah, they had we had it down in an hour. It was great. I was wow! I was so excited. Oh. I was excited that they squeezed me in. And right. it's probably because we have a little history. Because I know I'm from like that many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to play that? We could. Uh... Yeah, play that because that was so much fun. And so, so this is this is recent. Yeah, this right? is just last two weeks. Not even. Okay, it's that new. I'll, I'll cue this it's up fresh here. Fresh off the press. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, that's they used to press records. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Christian. Yes, uh, young Christian. Learn over something there, new every time. day, especially with John in the room. Yes. So is this hat day? Because I did wear my hat, and I noticed we all have hats on. Is that okay? We don't all have hats on. Oh well, no, we don't all have. Hats no, on. I need to get a haircut. Those though. are. That's right. Those are um, headphones. He's <laughs> young, and his hair is still nearly naturally <laughs> blonde. If he lived out in California, it would be blonde until <laughs> right? he fell out. <laughs> all right. So here it is. Is it Holly Jolly or Jolly Holly? It's Jolly Holly. It's Jolly Holly. Christmas. That's the title. Holly. Okay. Thanks to Joe. By Diane Ruggiero. Yay! You said I did it. So all right. Well. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Here it is. <laughs> Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Sugar highs and sugar lows and a belly full of beer. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Spread some Christmas cheer. Very nice. Very nice. Thanks. Well done. You have a beautiful thank you. voice. Aw, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Big difference mm, from the funny. rock vibe, though, huh? It was yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. Now, What's the worst thing that ever happened to you guys on Christmas? I remember after I got in the Army, I was hard drinking and fell into a Christmas tree and brought it down. But oh, that's why I wrote the song. They weren't, the gifts weren't <laughs> yet under it, so they didn't get crushed. And I kind of did. And you know, the lights are hot. As long as the tree fared well. Oh, yeah. And when you're young, that's all you're, that matters. everything's flexible. <laughs> right. What do you, you have a Christmas uh, disaster story? 
Not really. It I... doesn't have to do with some uh, older woman and another man. <laughs> no, oh, that, that, <laughs> turn. that didn't oh, happen really. on Christmas. Ooh. No, I uh, no, I, I mean, I have a near disaster story. I, I, I remember one year there was a blizzard on Christmas and uh, driving back from my grandmother's house, I wiped out on uh, Route 4. Oh, I had that happen around did Christmas, you? too. Yeah. 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 Rushing to get something, right? Yeah, rushing. I was rushing to, just to get home. They had insulted. Mm-hmm. I used to live out, you know, out in Durham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know. What, yeah, right, right. The, they're not always. As, it's not like a super highway it's plowed uh, right. regularly. Is everything all right, Michael Martin? Yeah, you, you keep running out into the hallway. <laughs> He's got business deals to make. He's oh. waiting for Santa. My my man called. Oh, oh, it's oh, Meme. Okay. You're oh. Meme? Yeah. Did she say hi? Did, did she tell you to say hi to me? No. No, oh. he oh. says. Okay. No. Uh, Is she sitting outside park? No. No. She okay. lives in Dallas, uh, Fort Worth. She oh. listen, She listens to our. Uh, she listens to us on uh, KCOW. Oh, nice. KCOW in Dallas, Fort Whatever Worth. Whatever happened to your cattle report, by the way? Oh, I still got to do that. Yeah, they're really on me All right, about guys, that. Yeah, so the cattle's doing pretty well. They're pretty healthy. Yeah, that's the end of the cattle report. Thank you guys for yeah. tuning in. <laughs> no, actually, a bunch of them died. It's terrible. Oh, okay. But, I yeah. was terribly oh, no. wrong. So Fire that's, me. But uh, yeah, so uh, Michael Martin knows Meme. Uh, she, uh, she's a big fan, right? Didn't she say, like, I'm her favorite radio host ever? Aww. No, no, it, it, it was always stuff. Uh, oh. Boy. But it was implied. I mean, obviously. Or... We were talking about other things, right? Other stuff he cannot get into. Oh, you don't just you you don't get on the phone with her and talk about me and and how <laughs> no. awesome the show is and how much she loves it <laughs> and how much she looks forward to it every day on KCOW? No, it. Um, mm. We we were talking business about my student loans. Oh, oh. <laughs> student loans. that's it. Did so we it... just have a talk about student loans oh. there? Oh, yep. Oh. Just went in. A, I just went in on John's show about student loans. I'm not a big fan of college because of student loans. No, it's hard, right? Yep. So much money. Uh, Stefan is asking if uh, Michael, if you can yodel uh, during the cattle report like Easy G did last week. Easy G actually yodeled. I don't remember that, but uh... you know, who's a great yodeler, Wally Cox, which is before his time. But you remember Wally Cox? No. No, that's mo- probably more my time. He he, got, he was on the uh, what was that show where they're all in Hollywood Squares? He would yodel on that show. No, he he uh, oh. would yodel, he yodeled uh, in one of his appearances on the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, I know a yodeler. You do? Yeah, he still yodels to this day, and he yodels great. Is he from um, around here? Ronnie Chase. He's from close by. Yeah. Could he come on my uh, show and yodel? Yes. Yodel. Oh, that'd be great. Can he bring his keyboard? Yeah. Oh my God, this guy's so good. And he does a song with this whole big yodel thing. And the yodel part of it is probably like at least a minute long. Wow. He does it. Really? Yeah, he's so good. Huh. Now, Christian wow. uh, what? is getting an education <laughs> in the birth of rock and roll. And we were talking about Hank Williams Sr. And he yodeled on his records. You know, it wasn't really. He had that. Thing. Yeah, 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 he had that. Got thing. a feeling called. But this is boots. a real yodeler. Ooh. Yep. Oh. You know, a little, little I saw a video one. on Facebook of this little kid yodeling. Really? Yeah, in Walmart. And next thing you know, this kid's famous from yodeling. Was he from Arkansas? Oh. I don't know where he's from. But the kid literally did like a huge show. He, he performed at the Grand Old Opry after. Wow. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, yo, if, I'm, if, if I can just go into Walmart and sing and get one famous, thing? let's do it. You yodeling. just need to be great at one thing. Yodeling. Right? There was a Swiss... An immigrant from Switzerland, he was Swiss American, and uh, Carmel, California, owned a Swiss restaurant, and he would yodel when he was drunk, or probably <laughs> when he. I was just there when he was drunk. He, he just passed away, I guess. Aww. But uh, you know, because they do yodel in Switzerland, I guess you have to mm-hmm. to be known. It's part you know? of their culture, right? Yeah, and the the dogs uh, carrying drink, uh, drink around with them. You know, did they yodel Amazing Grace at, at his funeral? I don't know. Uh, I'll have to ask. I just found out he had passed away. Oh, that's so. Sad. Can I just uh, give a uh, before and then I'll shut up about uh, history of Manchester. This uh, Matt just loves hearing about Manchester, New Hampshire, and the <laughs> past and everything. It's where he spends most of his time, right, Matt? Well, that that is true. <laughs> I, I do. Yes. Before Adam Sandler, 
and the 17-year-old uh, guitarist with Iron Butterfly, Inagata DeVita, something before your time again. And uh, I know Inagata DeVita. Inagata DeVita, baby. baby. Well, the yeah. uh, guitarist was a uh, like a 14-year-old kid from Manchester, New Hampshire. Though. They only did that one album, but... There's a Cheech and Chong skit where, you know, they mentioned, like, you know, because it was on the charts for, like, 200 weeks. And, oh, yeah. And you can live off those royalties forever. Wait, but, so, yeah, where, what about the history? Before, and before Adam Sandler, the biggest entertainer to come out of Manchester, well, there's others, but we'll just keep it to that, was Faye McKay, born Fayetta Gelinas in Manchester, New Hampshire. And she made her uh, day. She won the Ted Mack Amateur Hour in 1951. But she was famous for a novelty song. She used to be on talk shows in the old days. Mike Douglas and Merv Griffin. Hey, somewhat like me. The 12, <laughs> the 12 Days of Christmas. And I was out in Las Vegas like, Jesus. Did she sing it? She didn't write yeah. it. She sings the 12 day, Days of Christmas because... The act was she gets drunk uh, as uh, as she's doing it. Oh, she does a shot after each day? Yeah, yeah, because when oh. you were doing that. I'll have to find it and send it to you, or I'll send it to Matt and yeah, send yeah. it on to you. But she was still doing That's her act funny. Like, into this the 21st century. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I think she was related to Gary Hamer. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's Gary Hamer? She's the Honorable Heidi Hamer's husband. Okay, who's Heidi Hamer? She's I'm the sorry. honorable Heidi Hamer. Who is that? <laughs> she's one of the she's one of the tarot gods of uh, Oh, Noah's okay, side. I missed the yeah, I didn't. Yes, yes. The tarot goddesses? We uh, don't use sexist language here. I haven't no, I haven't been around for a month. We're very PC here. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. 2019. <laughs> right. It's 2019 and as we see it it's because almost the beginning uh, of the show. Everyone gets offended. It's almost 2020. Yes, we had someone offended earlier. I just received a text message that says, "Wow, what a Dare I say, Snowflake? That came in on the uh, text Ooh. line referring to our caller earlier, uh, Tony. Do you have any oh. comic songs about Buddha? Comic songs? No. Oh. No, I don't sing about Buddha. Usually I sing about rock and roll, but it's Christmas, so I try to sing about yeah. impact, you know. Nothing about yes. Mother Nature. Mm. Uh, no, but I have mm. a New Year's Day song. Ooh. Oh, yes, we should play that. Should we yeah. play it now? Yeah, I guess so, right? We could play it now. We could play it because New Year's is coming. That's true. Let me uh, grab that here. So this was a little home recording. It's not like in a professional studio, but I thought it was pretty fun. I wanted it to sound like we were on the porch in Louisiana. Yeah. That's how, I mean, I know it's like kind of With some white lightning? What? Some white lightning? Yeah. I always wanted to sit on a porch in Louisiana and sing a song. Ooh. Do you know anyone? I've never been outside of <laughs> no, New Orleans. I've know never been outside Louisiana. of like the French Quarter in uh, New Orleans, except for the airport. Really? Oh yeah, that's a great city. Michael Marno, is your meme calling? No, she's oh. calling from uh, uh, New Orleans. <laughs> no. You hear how he Plug says that? In. He's like, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So, well, let's hear this. So, this is uh, this is New Year's Day. Now, this is this is from uh, a few years ago. Yeah, it's uh, it's either two or three years ago. I can't remember. But it's, uh, of course, uh, yeah, three years ago, according to this. But it's uh, but it's timeless in that it comes around every year. And I can only play it once a year. Right, right. <laughs> well, yeah, here, uh, so we'll listen to it now. So this is uh, okay. This is Diane's song, uh, New Year's Day. Well, it's New Year's Day. I'm just sitting here and I'm trying to write a song. I've been looking at all my ups and downs.
song Yeah, the way you break down walls Oh yeah, we can find a way In this crazy world Pick ourselves right up when we fall down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. And welcome back, everybody. It's Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we're live on WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, as well as Comcast 97, streaming at WMNHradio.org and on the Facebook on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And we are sponsored by The Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street. It is Wednesday, which means tonight they have trivia night over there at 7 p.m., so you can check that out. Uh, that sound you hear is... Uh, uh, oh, yes, John Hopwood is, uh, oh, very good, yes. He's uh, moving the mugs. He's our mug mover. I tried to uh, I tried to uh, hook him up with a job as a roadie uh, a while ago. I don't know if you remember that, uh, John. Now, how do you think I found the banjo player? Right, well, that makes sense. Uh, Diane Ruggiero. Ruggiero. You did it. I did it, okay. Is okay. here with us. <laughs> that was and, nice. Uh, we <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, we just heard her song, New Year's Day. Of course, it's almost, it's almost 2020. You, almost. you needed an accordion, though, to make it real Zydeco. Did you say that accordion? Was, oh, yeah. Did you say our accordion? A, accordion? He needs a oh. uh, an accordion. No. Oh. Because that is like Zydeco and then the scat singing. Accordion yeah. would have been great. I didn't yeah. know anyone who played. Mm-hmm. Zydeco? Right, because with the, yeah. Yeah. There's a great thing you can find online, Rye, uh, Rye Cooter on the old gray whistle test. I think it was about 77 or 78. I saw it when on the BBC, like, uh, 82. And he's doing Zydeco, and it reminded me so much of that. that but he's song? got the accord, you know. Couldn't you imagine accordion. yourself, though, sitting yeah. on a porch oh, yeah. doing that and yeah. just, like, somebody playing spoons? No. Yeah. It was a computer. That's track, what you right? needed. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we needed a spoon player and an accordion player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stefan in the Facebook live chat says, I love the scat singing and laughter yeah. at the end of that song. Thank you. Uh, Stefan also says, uh, oh boy, Trump is leaving the NATO summit early. Uh, bone spurs can't take being laughed at by world leaders. <laughs> well, you know, it is the holidays. Yeah. He probably has to get back to uh, back to Washington, you know, get ready for uh, for Christmas. Get ready for his next tweet. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, so what have you been, um, what are you doing with the, the new music that you've been recording? So it's streaming Diane? everywhere. It's streaming Great. YouTube, Spotify, um, all the Christmas stuff is on, um, all the major search engines. Excellent. So you can go listen after this. If you want to grab it off of YouTube, it's there. Yeah. Um, I put it on Facebook, all the, um, the link. So yeah. easy to get to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good holiday vibe, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How many, um, because there's at least one other. There's two more Christmas songs. Two more. So you have, uh, yeah, there's Christmas Time for Love Mm -hmm. and Christmas is Shining. Yep, that's the new one. That's the new one. With David Lockwood. Okay, so we'll definitely play that. And Jolly Holly. We'll play them both, but. Okay. okay, so so as Christmas is shining, was that also Brand recorded new. at? Uh, that was at Rocking Horse. That was with at Rocking David Horse. David Lockwood, who's amazing. Okay. Yeah, um, he did a lot of the instrumentation. He did a lot of the arrangement, and he he drives around with a flatbed with a piano on the back of Baby Grand, and he just 
randomly stops at places and plays. Really? He goes into the woods. He'll go to the lake. He'll he'll drive down a street, park the the flatbed. You know, he has a big truck with a yeah. flatbed. The piano's on the back in the nice weather. Yeah. And he'll just break out in a song and. People who all of a sudden just come and gather. He was on New Hampshire Chronicle. Oh, wow. Not too long ago. Huh. So fun. Yeah. So good. Like, talented. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's, uh... He has a lot out on Facebook as well. Oh, I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If he's just, like, does he does he only do that around New Hampshire? Or does he go, like, does he go on tour and go to other places? He doesn't go on randomly, tour. Uh... <laughs> he doesn't go on no. tour, but he's <laughs> all over Facebook, and he's really, um... He's really prominent. He is the um, school teacher, music teacher for Holderness School. Oh, okay. So he's so good. Yeah. I was so lucky to come across him. Yeah. And that he accepted the song. Because I went to him with the song. I'm like, would you help me do this song? Because I really think you could do it, you know, great justice. And he agreed and he did. And he helped me. So I put him on as a writer. Yeah. Because he did help with a lot of, with a lot of the arrangement, instrumentation, Um great great musician yeah and i have to give a little bit of kudos to paul cascio for that new year's day yeah and then the sax player mark flynn on jolly holly okay okay um what happened to the there was one time that you you came here with a a gentleman you were working with john so john is an international salesman yeah he travels the world and we've been in touch but i i think he does like music in canada like recording for people, like really? they utilize him. Oh. As, so there's the trade barrier now because yeah, yeah, he's yeah. so busy. <laughs> he can't, so I told him we got to get together. You know, I got a new song coming out on the radio because the the two songs, it's Christmas time for love and Christmas is shining, is playing on um, ninety four point one and one hundred six point nine in the Lakes region. Yeah, and the it's Christmas time for love is used on a. Uh, jewelry ad oh and i told him the new song i have you have to go he's such an amazing guitar player but he's been too busy to connect with me again well we not, still chat yeah, yeah now yeah. with trump and trudeau the prime minister of canada the falling out you might not hear from him ever again. that's true <laughs> right he may never well, come back at least right. the 2020 or the <laughs> you know yeah he's you know. all over the place so busy yeah yeah wow he's great though yeah no that's uh we will reconnect and write more songs because i have Oh, so there's another song I wrote with him called Hard Rock Christmas. That's going to be next year. Oh, okay. That's going to be next year because he's such a good rocker that I need him for that song. Play. Yeah. And he wrote that with me. Oh. There's so. the whole problem, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't, they've don't. they outlawed Christianity up in Kanakistan, <laughs> you know. I didn't know that. Well, the, Wait, the, the, the liberal party. You, you right. can't trust them. That Trudeau. You know, Pierre Trudeau and the... The snowflakes? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, he, he's, he used to know... Uh, Jason uh, Trudeau's mother uh, back at Studio 54. Margaret. Oh, my God. But, oh, yeah. You know, he's under that gag order. Mick Jagger put him on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't talk about the wild times at Studio 54. I've been to Studio 54. Oh. Back in the day. I remember seeing I you I worked there. in Manhattan. Yeah. I never went downstairs, ever. Oh. oh. We were, oh. I was we downstairs. Were all I was downstairs, downstairs all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was always downstairs. Not oh, my me. goodness. Not me. Not me. Oh, yeah. You, Paul Cormier, and Sexy man i j love um by the way speaking of snowflakes i did receive a uh something on the text line uh he says uh this is the same person who called tony a snowflake and says uh i mean tony if that's even his real name religion is such a poison oh my goodness oh, a little controversy uh, there can be a little Anything controversy can be right if if uh misused it, it can be yes yes, yes. So I, I'm not going to have you insult the tarot gods. <laughs> hey, you know, well, it's so interesting. You know, I'm just a writer, like I'm writing a novel now. And where it comes from is just, you know, it's like the gods blessing you. You've never felt, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, since you're writing songs about one sun god, you know, Christ, who's Apollonian. You've never th- been moved to write about Zarathustra for I instance? didn't write about Christ. Who said I wrote about Christ? Oh, well, <clears throat> and what's up? What's up? Uh, Tony would say uh, <laughs> you're writing about Christ. I didn't write about Christ. He might I be about uh, Christmas. Mm. Well, then we won't talk about Zarathustra. We'll talk about Zoroasterism, you know, the festival of light. Well, what you'll it, have to enlighten Mazda. me. Uh, Mazda <laughs> was, you know, they used to be the name I'll of light bulb. I have to meditate on it. I used to drive a Mazda. What did you say? A Christ, Mazda. Christ was Apollonian? What? Christ is Apollonian. He's a, uh, Apollonian? Uh, Apollo is the sun god. Oh! oh, we're talking about Greek mythology now. 
Well, uh, Apollo you becomes can't mix the as two. Zarathustra, as a you know one god comes into Rome. Apollo takes on the aspects of uh, of a sun god, which is revolutionary in the pantheon. Yeah, I know about and, uh, Apollo. It's like the Aristra of what's his name. You know, uh, you 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 move from the Furies which are more primitive type of gods, you know, probably that animate the tarot deck because they're, they're still with us, to, you know, an Apollonian god, which is more, it brings in reason. In other mm. words, the matriarchy is done in by the patriarchy, and we all have to wa- uh, worship a golden palace. I need some drugs. <laughs> well, let's not, don't well, we I all? I do, too. With my bad. <laughs> and let's, and let's, give me any. <laughs> let's not forget, too. Wasn't it drugs. Apollo? Wasn't it Apollo who defeated Rocky? Yes. It was. Yes. Wasn't Apollo it? Yes. Creed. Yes. I used to have a statue of, uh, of Apollo about seven or eight inches. You had, so a, sta- tall, yeah. you had a statue of Apollo Creed? Not Apollo Creed, of Apollo. Of oh, the God. I thought you meant you I had a... I loved Greek mythology. I thought you meant you had a, a statue of... Uh, of uh, Oh, about seven or eight inches. A statue yeah. of uh, Billy D. Williams. I, I was very confused. Oh, no. These are from the old... Did you ever see the old Ray Harryhausen movies? Like, uh, they're all claymation and stuff. Oh, they were great. No. The craftsmanship. But I do like Gumby and Pokey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Certainly, yes. <laughs> That's claymation. Right, and yes. And then the... What's the, you know, uh, Davy and Goliath? You know, the yeah, satanic claymation. talking dog. Whoa, what? You know, dogs can't mm. talk. Neither can Clay. I'm over here falling asleep, and he's over here talking about satanic talking dogs. <laughs> no satanic one, no one. Dogs. By the way, Wait. Clay can't talk either. Right, well, we're Mikey, don't fall asleep over there. God made us from Clay. Clay can talk when animated by Satan or God <laughs> or God, the breath of God. The right. How does it feel to be descended from Adam's rib? <laughs> a genetic experiment. Of, well, oh man, since 4004 BC. <laughs> that is a good question. It is a good question. Yes. That's a song you could write about. There you go, yeah. Oh, but no seven or eight No one will buy it or like it. Yeah, no. Oh, no. you never know. Yeah, no, right. I don't like this idea. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't to, like uh, anything. Our friend... Uh, uh, I'm our, your grandfather. Shut up. Our friend uh, Joel the Moose Elber is in the uh, Facebook live chat. Joel. Spe- speaking of old farts. Yes. I'm looking at one. His name's... I'm your granddad. I'll put yes. your cross by don't, knee. Don't oh. speak to your grandfather that way. How dare you? I'll say what I want to say when I want to say it, how I want to say it. <laughs> That's <you> my go. <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even look alike. It's so weird. Who would know, right? You, would you ever I guess? can show you pictures of when I was a young guy. Yes. He just needs to change his glasses and they would. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. If he had the same yeah. glasses on. <laughs> no, I don't no, see no, it. No, no, the same I, shape. I don't see it. Me either. Sorry. Oh, right. Mike, uh, Jeez, Mike's you obey alive. your meme. Mike's alive. <laughs> that's the first, I'm your the first words Mike said like in the past half an hour. Yeah. No, he also denied that uh, his meme uh, loves my show. That was more than a half an hour ago, though. <laughs> well, it seems like it just happened. It still hurts. The wound is still fresh. Oh, no, it's okay. Like the mm. wounds of Christ, which gives us the word oh, Zom. going back Zom. to Christ again? Oh, you had to have been My here next the song's going to be Jesus Christmas. Oh, gee. Oh, no. oh, that's going to get Tony going. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes. Wow. Yes. That'd be funny, right? That's very, well, that, that would be funny, actually, I think. But, I uh, am wide awake, folks. He's not. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I heard us talking about Jesus, and it perks me right up. Oh, we can all sing. Uh, well, I have to go at 530. That's when my meter runs up. But what's that Day 11 huh. song we, you and I sing? The Lord. Oh, the Bible told us so. Yes. He does the bass. Really? Yeah, I do the Dale Evans part. Where's Roy your, Rogers you mean part. with your mouth the bass? Yes, I oh, do the okay. told us so. Oh, the bass vocal. So. Yes. Oh, the I thought, because I knew he played me so. Oh, gosh. Well, we'll sing that if, to- if Tony calls back. We'll sing that for him. He'll okay. love it. He'll love it. It'll make his day. I'll hum if you sing it. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Be curious. Oh, you want to sing it now? Something and uh, well, you, like you kind of need to know. I can't remember the lyrics now. Mm. <laughs> it's because you... Uh, we're talking about Apollo. Apollo. Without Apollo, there is no Christ Jesus as pastor. What about on. what about Athena? Pallas Without... Athena, who sprung from the forehead. Of... She was the goddess of love. No. No. Oh, that was that was. Wait. That was, was it. Aphrodite. Uh, uh, Aphrodite's was the goddess. Her of name love. is Aphrodite, and she rides what a did crimson Athena shell. Do? That's cream. Tales of Brave Ulysses. Oh. Athena. Had the Aegis, the shield, she protected Athens. All gods, oh. except for 
the Hebrew God. Jeho- and her son was Achilles, Jehovah, right? Were women originally? Her son was Achilles, and she yes. baptized him in the Thames River. But well, Julie, no, Julie his Christie ankle. was uh, his mother in the movie. Not with Brad in the Pitt. movie. I mean, in Greek mythology. All I know about religion is from movies like Ten Commandments with oh. John Maston. <laughs> oh. You know, my m- You're grandmother boring died. boring me over here, John. Oh, your grandson's getting antsy. Oh, he's oh just a God. brat. Yeah. He needs a good spanking. But Whoa. So, it's so <laughs> costly Whoa. these days. Whoa. <laughs> now that they got rid of Whoa. Craigslist, uh, we can't get an economical spanking for the kid. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I know of a site. I'll tell you off there. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Oh, Whoa. no. Michael what? Martin, no. <laughs> what is your ma- what is your meme going to think when she hears that? And I realize she won't hear it yet because we're on a delay with uh, KCAL. Can you can you cut and paste? Or... I, I, I might have to. I, yeah. My goodness. It reminds me of that song about the flower pot, Maven. Uh, Christ Camp Teen. Remember, he's getting spanked yes, on the cover. Uh, uh, yes. Well, Christ you know, this, this is the season for spanking, I guess. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Uh, All right. So many fascists um, like to be spanked. Um, Right, yeah. yes. Bare bottom spanking. <laughs> Obviously. I think that goes without saying. Hand or paddle? No, oh, this was <laughs> a hand, you know. Uh, paddle. The maven liked it by hand. That's how he lives his sex life, by hand. <laughs> when I, oh, well. When I was a kid. This uh, is just a fictional character we're done. They about. would paddle at the Catholic school. Oh. Ooh. They would it's, paddle you. How did they do it with the stub not, of your tail? Not in a nice way. Oh, that way. came later. I, 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 how dare you? Yeah. Yeah, you used to be able to whack kids upside the head. Not, not anymore. No, not. Well, when I went to school, it was the paddling was only if something really, if it was something really severe. Oh. They like, were pretty. What was severe? Exposing yourself. <laughs> well, that would get you paddled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know. or a trip to the priest's office. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> I have a story about exposing myself. I'm not oh, going to tell it. Okay, 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 okay. Um, we're going to change the subject real no, quick. I wanna, no, Cal, no, 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 no. Michael, Michael, Thank you, you no. go ahead. You have Mike? the floor, sir. Michael. You have the Michael, floor. Michael, as your publicist and your lawyer. Now, now I'm now your lawyer, okay? You can pay <laughs> oh, me later. <laughs> Watch what you say. You were on live radio. Do not do this. Oh, we can, he can censor it. John, no one's talking to you right now. I'm talking to my client here. Kid, you're a spoil sport. You, you know, let him co- rip. Go go ahead, Michael. Eighth grade, volleyball trial. <laughs> Hillside <laughs> Middle School. No jockstrap. Oh, no. Somehow, somehow, <laughs> waiting in line to do one of the drills. Oh, man. Somehow. Somebody pantsed you? No. No, um. Uh, it was self-inflicted, Ooh. <laughs> and I and I got one day of in-school suspension for it. But what'd you do exactly? Oh, you can tell us after. Uh, oh. he's right. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's right. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to know. Yeah, no, 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 I want to know. Story, you don't you're tell already you're already knee deep in this one. No pun intended. But <laughs> let, let's go. Just let it out, man. Let him free. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember what the specific what? detail was. Oh. What did you oh. inflict on yourself? He's trying to make something up good. <laughs> He's probably he tells us the whole story. He tells us the whole story, but then he can't. <laughs> but, but then he can't remember the good part of it. They oh, whipped man. it out of it. It's not fair. No, it was. It was. Something. I don't know, man. But that woke me up. Thank you. Something Put me in a straight else. panic. But yeah, you know. I can't remember right now. No, oh, no, oh boy! I'll, I'll go off the air. Is it uh, is it that you can't remember, or you, it occurs to you that your meme is listening uh, on KCAL? <laughs> yeah, on Chris, KCAL. Yes, both. Ah, yes. <laughs> Shout out to our supporters down in Texas, big, big old Texas down there. Ooh, big. Amy Hazard King joins us in the Facebook live chat. Uh, she says, "I tune into the Matt." Connerton unsheathed show. Yes, that's my other show that I do uh, on the dark web. And yeah. I am legally prohibited from telling you how to find it. Yeah, but basically, yeah, it's on the dark web, you know. But that's where you can find some some paddling. That's where we Whoa. do the Buddha Funny. jokes. The Buddha jokes, yes. Buddha jokes. That's or, right. you know, you can listen to <laughs> Ducking with Cover with Christian Lacoste coming January 2020. Yes. I thought your name was LaCroix. 
look the, the cross. <laughs> Your grandfather is supposed to leave. You don't even know. Or, his, well, you got here. another ten minutes. Oh man, so. oh, yeah, that's a bummer. Lacroix. Well, I'm dyslexic, so nobody ever wants to hang out with their grandparents. You're so also you're ADHD. like ADHD. A... You're you were pointing at stuff in the TV studio earlier today. Well, was I was having flashbacks. I saw Cincinnati in the psychedelic what, background. <laughs> Flashbacks from what? He pronounces sense, sense, sense. But I no, guess that's what we do in New Hampshire. You, but since, sounds you, like that's what we call Cincinnati. No, you misunderstood me when I say it, and I don't remember what happened, to be well, honest with you. You have to have a sharp memory to be successful on uh, TV, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I barely remember what I just said, okay? Leave me alone. I couldn't even remember Steven Tyler, but for Mike Martin, huh? <laughs> Oh, Yeah, you know what? Don't be quiet because you couldn't remember what was it you couldn't remember at the beginning of the you show. You can't remember what you couldn't remember. I yeah. can't remember that <laughs> incident of self flagellation uh, during basic training. Oh, what? you have a story. What's All your right, story? Let's so, get into it. Did you get paddled? <laughs> no. You... Oh, no. They made me the, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The squad leader. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's the time uh, just before the mad idea. crapper, remember? I told that story. I, that sounds so familiar, and yet I cannot in remember. In basic training, you know, it was pretty intense. And uh, Although after the first part, after the first few days, they send you to the barracks, and you actually have uh, commodes with walls around them. Uh, but you don't dawdle first when you're out there in a <laughs> line of pots, you know, right in front of everybody. Be I surprising like... how quickly you do your business and go about things. And nobody <laughs> looks at you, or you don't look at anybody either. But... <laughs> Oh, basic training. Two months. You don't see a... W- Once they, they, they march some women past us, because women were just being brought more into the service, and it's like, oh. <laughs> you, you, yeah, <laughs> how do I poop in front of a woman? <laughs> well, no, no. They were, oh. we I don't were think, in our <laughs> barracks, and they were outside. I don't, I, don't think, uh, I don't think that's what John meant by that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> without wi- without oh. women, it's so weird, because I towards the end, I had to deliver a message to the sergeants, and they had a TV on. There were women on it, and you're just like, Ugh, you're just like transfixed because you're you not don't, used to being without yeah, women. You don't get you know? to see but, women much. Uh, yeah, but you know they're always the the drill instructors are always trying to screw with you. Although you know the other word that means when F is you know as common as the word and or the in the military mm-hmm. and, and so in Italian households. Yeah, you know, we had one of the uh, you know we had a washer and dryer, and then they declared there was a mad. We'll just say crapper, but you know, mm. use the other word, uh, more direct. Somebody had pulled somebody's uh, uniforms out, put them in a toilet, and dumped on them. Now, we all believed. They were pretending it was some pervert in the uh, in the company, but we knew it was one of the drill instructors. You knew. We did, you know. Because he has to test you every minute, well, nothing, right? Well, that's pretty far up, but we, you know, usually they test you by nobody's there, and they throw you into the locker because they weren't supposed to beat us up then. Although oh. you know, they have, they get other people to beat the miscreants up. Oh. They call it blanket parties. But that was just as they were bringing stuff in. Like car, they have cards now. Like oh, I'm stressed out. Now uh, it's really strict, right? Well, there's it's it's as it's far as a bo- uh, a bo- uh, what do you call it with women and men? Well, it's not bisexual. Co-ed. Co-ed. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I'm, thinking, I'm stuck on that porn hub site again. Oh no! But wow. uh, bivalves or whatever. And, uh, well, there's a, well, never mind. And, uh, so, yeah, we were just figuring one of the DIs to just, you know, pop the, his champagne cork and just decided to crap on somebody's clothes. Yeah, you know, just for <laughs> what we call, well, we, we can't call it craps and giggles, you know. Right. Gotcha. But that's part of the army. That's why, uh, I'm get, getting, uh, you know, I want Christian, my grandson, to be in a tougher outfit. Yes. <laughs> that's why we're taking you down to the Is Marine recruiter. Is so. no. He's going to the military? No. Well, he's got to gain I'm a few not. pounds first. <laughs> right, yeah. They come at you with that big Q-tip, <laughs> the Pugie stick, down at Paris Island. And he won't have he won't have his phone there to no. uh, get lost. In. Who knows? They probably do have phones All right, it's now. about 530. <laughs> <laughs> you already killed his story. Yeah, I know, right? We'll never find out now. I, I saw that going places that should not have gone, but 
He can't, oh, couldn't remember it, so we're okay. You know, you just let it go, and then, you know, let's like Jason. Okay, now, now I'm getting weeks. memories back. Yeah, oh, let's go. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, uh, you're going to get me suspended <laughs> for two weeks. It's part of his plan to take over my show. John, oh. John, it's 530. You're, you're meter, man. Uh, you know, uh, I know, I know the. Oh, after I, I just say I know some of the aldermen, but then I just ran for aldermen at large, and they're probably all PO'd at me. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I saw it. Never mind. We're not going to go into that one. Yeah. All right, John Hopwood is leaving us, so let's play this. Nice uh, to see you. Thank you for uh, coming Holly in, John. Reds. Shall we uh, play this? Uh, Christmas is shining. You said this is a new one. It is. Very it is. good. Very good. All right. So let's uh, let's give this a listen. So. This is Christmas is Shining by Diane Ruggiero. And s- Dave Lockwood. And Dave Lockwood, mm-hmm. yes. All right, here it is. Pray to the angels and sing to the stars. Find all your light and define who you are. Love with abandon, find strength in what's right. Bright, shiny faces, all goodness unites. Christmas is shining deep into our souls, brightening our spirits and warming the cold. And the chill that is playing in Earth's universe, these are the children of this world's rebirth. Blessed and youthful, the love travels far Heals all the pain that the elders endured The strength of the future exists in the pure, the good 